Hello plant lovers, it is Matthew in Melbourne welcoming you back to my channel. Thank you very much for finding me and if you're new here, I grow cold, cool, intermediate orchids here in Melbourne, Australia without any additional help from greenhouses or grow lights or humidifiers or heat mats, etc. They're either indoors or they're outdoors or they're out of the pool. So if that is of any interest, I post every week, so do hit subscribe and follow my very amateurish journeys. But today, plant lovers, look at this. It is Miltonia Day. Yes, I would like to introduce you to Miltonia Guanabara. I'll put that name below so you can see it. Isn't it the most beautiful purple? As you can see, a vigorous plant, but we'll get to that, but two flower spikes with the most beautiful colored flowers. So as it's out, I thought, let's do a deep dive into Miltonias. Okie doke then, first thing, where is it from, Matthew? Well, <laughs> let me tell you, the Miltonias are Brazilian. There's apparently one species that it's found in the north of Argentina, but essentially they are Brazilian and slightly lower elevations than their cousins, Miltoniopsis, which you might obviously have heard about or come across or grow. And the Miltonias do like slightly different conditions. So not that dissimilar to many orchids, it does like warmth and humidity, perhaps more than other things that I grow, such as Oncidiums and Miltoniopsis. But I think I have finally got the care right, hence its bloom, so we'll go through that. But the Miltonia is a Brazilian native. The genus was described in, I think, 1837, which is the year that Queen Victoria ascended the throne, and it was named after a chap called Viscount Milton, who was an avid botanist and collector of plants in England. So there you go, potted history. So let's have a look at the flowers. And as you can see, they are very, very, very beautiful. Reasonably large too. And you can certainly see a little bit of family resemblance to Miltoniopsis perhaps, but they're kind of actually more like Oncidium blooms than anything. But as you can see, quite a good size. There are many hybrids of Miltonias out there. The species are also available as well, and the species plants are really beautiful. I've got a couple myself. We'll see if they bloom. If they do, I'll make a video. So there is lots of variety and lots of color, and I'm sitting here and I'm smelling something, plant lovers, and I am trying to figure out how I can describe the fragrance. It's a, it's a spicy fragrance and it's almost like spicy banana, if that makes any sense. It doesn't smell like bananas, but you know if you sometimes go into really beautiful spice shops and there's something just a little unusual that you can't quite put your finger on? Well, <laughs> this is it. It's certainly got a spice shop aroma. Now, it's not overwhelming, but sitting here, there's a very gentle aroma and it's really beautiful. And like most orchids, unless they're pollinated by a nighttime beast, the fragrance tends to get switched on sort of mid-morning and then get switched off late afternoon. So the peak time for a pollinator to come along and have a good sniff and pollinate it. So Guanabara is basically monochrome. It's this beautiful purple color, but you can, as I said, find many, many hybrids with lots of different patternings, colors, and variations. So do have a look and reasonably easy to find. So you should be able to find Miltonias wherever you are. Okay, so let's get to my potted history pardon the pun, with this particular baby. Now I bought it, I would say, actually probably close to two years ago. It's one of the first orchids I bought, knowing nothing about Miltonias. And you can probably just see there that dead spike, it had one flower and it arrived with the flower and the flower lasted a long time, which is another characteristic of Miltonias actually, the blooms are long lasting, which is always good. So it had this single growth and it had this flower and it was very lovely and I watched it and loved it and then grew it and not much happened, plant lovers. Now I'll come in and show you closely, but perhaps if I spin this baby round, right round, baby, right round, can you see the growth? Well, anyway, I might come and do a different shot, but so we had the original pseudo bulb then it produced a couple of new growths. Now I was very happy about that thinking, aha, here we go, I'm set. It's all gonna be happy days from here on in and beautiful blooms, nothing. So then my orchid growing expertise, although I'm not an expert, but my basic knowledge started to improve and I realized that Miltonia is a Brazilian warmer growing 
orchid that needs reasonably bright light, slightly warmer temperatures, but a lot of humidity. And I just don't think I was giving it the right care. Now, plant lovers, if you have watched my epic growing space video, this was originally at the bottom of the stairs, which gets good winter light, but the ambience down there was actually a little cooler and a little darker in summer. So what I did was move it up to the top of the landing, which is also in the video I made about my grow spaces. So that gets much more ambient light all year and is quite a few degrees warmer than downstairs because heat rises. And I keep a spray gun on the floor next to it. So I give it a squirt whenever I walk past. So at least once a day in the morning, quite a heavy mist. And then whenever I'm walking past, another mist. So that is one of the things that I changed about the culture, which I think has really made a difference. And the other thing that I did was that I sit it in a dish of pumice pebbles so that whenever I water it, there's always a little bit of water that passes through to the bottom and just sits in the base. And I just feel it helps to create a little bit more humidity around the plant. There's a bit of, bit of study around that that says it makes absolutely no difference. But anyway, it makes me feel better about myself. So there you go. Those were the two key things for me that changed. I gave it brighter light. I gave it higher average ambient temperature and I misted it much more often in the second year of my owning it than in the first year. And ta-da, it has rewarded me with two flower spikes. Now, growth-wise, as you can see, quite a tricky plant to manage because Miltonias have this really sort of running rhizome habit. So it does grow along and along and along. And as you can see, it really is making a break for it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one of the things to figure out quite exactly how to pot your Miltonia. Now, I am going to have to repot this, I think, once the flowers have died. Um, and I think what I'm going to do is, obviously, the pot needs to be wider, not deeper. And so you can get quite wide, reasonably shallow terracotta pots, which is what I'm going to pot it in next, I think. But let's just look at the growing habit again. So you have this really strong rhizome growth, which pushes out the new growth. And what I've discovered with this one is that just as you think the new growth is about to sort of mature, you'll start to see the flower spike emerging. So say with an oncidium, you tend to get the pseudobulb maturing first, and then the flower appears with a little bit of time in between. This really, the spike is almost coming out with the new growth. So that is something to bear in mind with the flowering cycle of your Miltonia. Now, quite how often you could get blooms, I can't tell you, plant lovers, because this is the first time it's bloomed for me. But looking at the habit, it is very much tied to new growth production. So depending where you are, I guess if you can get multiple flushes of growths in a year, you could get multiple blooms in a year. But here in Melbourne, and I'm, I don't know if this is consistent, it puts on a growth spurt once a year and therefore flowers once a year for me. But that might not be consistent for other Miltonias in other parts of the world. Needless to say though, I'm just really happy I got it right and it's flowering. All right, so some more basics. As you know, plant lovers, I live for terracotta pots and this one is in a terracotta pot. I am, as I said, gonna just have to figure out quite how to go with the repotting, because as you can see, as the rhizome creeps, it produces roots that really do need to be in touch with media, ideally. I'm also actually looking at bonsai pots because they're quite shallow and quite wide, and you can get some really beautiful ones. So watch this space. I might <laughs> branch out into bonsai pots, not bonsai. Bonsai pots might be the solution for creeping orchids like Miltonias. Other basic care then, as is the case with many orchids, the Miltonia in its natural environment is an epiphyte. So the usual story with media, you need something that is aerated and loose and quite light. And that does really depend, I think, as to where you are. So here in my climate, I, I grow this indoors all year. Um, Miltonias cannot take those cooler winter minimums that we get in Melbourne. And I use a mixture of medium bark with a little bit of charcoal and a little bit of sphagnum moss in the base because one of the things I have noticed is this is a thirsty baby. 
uh, and a little bit of shell grit to give it some calcium and of course mycorrhizal fungi which promotes healthy root growth and mycorrhizal fungi also make available all the minerals and nutrients in the potting mix including the shell grit makes it available for the root system of the plant so mycorrhizal fungi is very important but yes, the exact medium that you use, I think would depend on the type of climate you're in, whether you're in a very warm, humid environment, which this would love, you might want to pot it differently than in my climate where it's a little drier and it's kind of important to keep the moisture levels up with Miltonias. I've noticed it is a bit thirsty in my environment. I'm actually just feeling it right now, thinking, hmm, I think this baby needs a drink. Fertilizing for me, pretty similar to everything else. I put some granules of slow release fertilizer in the mix when I repot it, and that is literally maybe three or four. And then in spring, a topical application of the same amount of slow release granules, general slow release fertilizing granules. And then throughout the growing season, so for me that is spring through to summer to early autumn, a liquid feed maybe every three waterings. And that really depends which way the wind's blowing. Sometimes it might be seaweed based, sometimes a fish emulsion, or sometimes an orchid based liquid fertilizer. And I always dial the mix down by at least one eighth of the recommended dose on the bottle, because I think it is not a good practice to overfeed your orchids just as it's not to overfeed yourself because the same thing happens i feel you kind of get unnatural growth so dial it down and with any orchid that's got kind of really vigorous roots if you are putting a topical application just kind of make sure that you don't get any of those slow release fertilizer beads near any of the aerial roots because they can really burn those roots so just make sure it's sitting on the media away from any roots and then, as I mentioned, watering, I have found that it is a thirsty beast. And so it's not one of those orchids that wants to stay damp, like a, a bog orchid, but it does consume water at a rapid rate. And this is already quite dry. And I only watered it, I think, two days ago. So it is midsummer and it's a terracotta pot, which does evaporate quickly. Anyway, you've got to find your own rhythm for that. Obviously, water it less in winter. It doesn't particularly need a rest period, but as with many orchids, you want to dial down the watering and the feeding in the slower, colder winter season and then ramp it up again in summer. And depending on your ambient temperature in your house or if it's outdoors, whether it dries out quickly, if you've got it in plastic, what the medium is, it will dry out faster or slower depending upon that. So kind of find your own way. All I can say is that mine does dry out and it's not hugely detrimental because orchids are really tough. You'll kill them with overwater generally more than underwater, but vigorous grower means plenty of water when it's growing and fertilizer when it's growing. There you go. There we are, Miltonia Guanabara, which I am loving. This cross was created in 1964. So yes, um, a Miltonia cross with life experience, but it's really beautiful. The flowers are a great color. The fragrance is really, oh, I wish I could tell you what it was. Is it like chopping something if you're making a curry? So maybe like lemongrass, I don't know. It's in that kind of area. It's really beautiful. And as you can see, quite vigorous. So relatively quickly, you're gonna get a beautiful specimen and you will fill your wide but shallow pot and have all these beautiful blooms. So that is my aim to get a, a big specimen of this and really have it covered in flowers. So there we are, plant lovers, Miltonia 101. I think we've covered that. As I said, I do grow it indoors all year because the winter minimums outside in Melbourne here are just too low. It can get just close to freezing and Miltonias certainly don't want that. I could put it outside in summer because it's very much the ambient conditions it likes, warmth, humidity, etc. but it just seems happy where it is and so it's found its spot and I'm not gonna move it now that it's started to bloom, which is something else you kinda have to do sometimes, find a spot that works and just commit to it. There we are, plant lovers. Thank you very much for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed our Miltonia deep dive and I look forward to seeing you next week with some other epic adventure. Do hit subscribe if you want to know quite what that is and I look forward to seeing you next week.